Hi there folks, how are we doing? This is Matt Gemmel. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Please let me know if you can hear me alright. I'm having a look at the comments just now on the screen. Lots of love hearts, that's good. Yep, you can all hear me. Hi there, how are you doing? Hello Marius, good to see you. It is about 5 minutes past 4pm here in Edinburgh, Tuesday the 5th of May. I am going to show you how people who can't see, uh, as well as you and I, or even who can't see at all, use an iPhone. Someone said, lovely accent, thank you very much, it's the only one I have. I'm filming on my iPhone 6, so I'm going to use my iPhone 5S here uh, as a demonstration machine. Now obviously the problem for people who are blind or severely visually impaired is that this is just a big flat piece of glass. Uh, there are no buttons to touch, so how does a blind person use this? Well, let's have a wee look. For you and I, obviously we can see what's on the screen, we can look at the icons, we can pick what we want to touch and then we can reach out using our vision to guide our finger and adjust course and touch the app or the button or whatever we want. We're using our eyesight all the time. If you're blind, that's obviously not an option, so they need another way to see what's on the screen before they choose what to interact with. And they also need a way to interact precisely without having to control in an accurate manner where their finger is moving. Apple provides a technology called VoiceOver on every one of its devices, Macs, uh, both desktop and notebook, iPads, iPhones, uh, and of course the, the Apple Watch as well. I'm going, to, I'm going to just turn voiceover on here on this phone and you're going to hear it talking to you. It will talk in a male British accent because I've got it set to uh, British English, of course. Oops. So you can triple tap the, triple press the home button to bring up this shortcut menu if you have the feature enabled to turn on voiceover. So I'm just going to switch it on here. Voiceover on. Calendar, Tuesday of 5 May. Now what it Double said there open. was voiceover on when I switched on voiceover and then it said calendar Tuesday 05 May, which is today's date obviously, double tap to open. You can probably see that there's now a cursor around calendar. That's the voiceover cursor and it's what you're looking at at the moment. It's what is selected. Now you can move that around by tapping something else directly if you want. Double tap to open. So that's unread. You can touch App Store. App Store. Double tap to open. And so on. But you can also navigate sequentially by swiping horizontally to the right or to the left. So we can move to music. Music. By swiping to, to the next icon. Notes. Find my friend. Unread. Double and tap so to open. Find notes. Going backwards works as Double well. Double tap to open. We can move between screens by using a three finger swipe. This is the home screen, obviously, which means we've got horizontal screens, so I can do page that. Page 2 of 2. Utilities folder. 17 apps. Double tap to open. That said, page 2 of 2. It always announces where you are uh, relative to the entire set of content. Page 1 of 2. Calendar. Tuesday of 5. What I did there was I tapped with two fingers at the same time. That tells VoiceOver to shut up until I either do that again or select something else. As you can imagine, if you're using this on a constant basis, you're hearing things like double tap to open very, very often. So you, you often want to just quickly navigate to something else or tell it to be quiet for a moment. If you're using voiceover on a Mac, then pressing the control key does exactly the same thing. You can also on an Apple Watch do that same gesture, that two finger single tap, which will silence voiceover for a moment. So we know how to select stuff. Contact, find my app store and red. Twitter, dark sky. Double tap to open. So how do we actually open and activate things? What we do is we double tap, but we double tap anywhere at all on the screen. A single tap moves the voiceover cursor, but a double tap, the system ignores it from the point of view of selecting something and instead treats it as 
uh, 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 sort of the, the user's intention to activate it. So let's have a look at, I don't know, let's have a look at notes. Notes. I can double, double tap, tap anywhere. I'm going to double tap way down here. And it notes. still activates notes. notes. Text field is editing. This is us in a text field, obviously. We can go back out using the home button, just like you're used to. Let's do that. Notes. Maybe we want double to go into open. contacts now. And ask the contacts. There's contacts. Double tap open. And we go. Body. Contacts. All contacts. Groups. And we've got a list now. We can move with a three finger swipe to go up and down a list and it will say, you know, page 12 of 15 or whatever. And we can navigate all through all of these elements and button. hear what they are and interact with them by double tapping. That's the basics of it. Obviously, there aren't just icons on the contacts. screen. There's all this extra stuff, double the status open. bar, for example. We can interact with that just by moving our finger until we hear that we're on the status bar. Matt, 1611, status bar item. That's the clock. Again, Slide we can navigate forward and back center. between Slide these things. Battery power. Status bar That's item. a battery, the clock, airplane mode. Airplane status mode. Bar item. We can trigger notification center once we're already on the status bar by using a three finger swipe down. When we're on the status bar again, we can trigger control center, which is that thing at the bottom of the screen with the flashlight and your music playback controls by swiping up with three fingers to come up from the bottom. And there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff we can do. Um, if, if, if you're a blind person, sometimes you don't want to necessarily run all over the screen with your finger to find something or you don't necessarily want to have to spatially remember where it is because our, our eyesight helps us a lot in terms of remembering where things are. Sometimes you want to just select something by doing a type to, to search and you can do that globally in voiceover using a two finger triple tap. So let's do that. This brings up the item chooser, items. and as Search you can field. see, uh, if, you, if you're a sighted person, it basically shows a list of all the things within the current element. We're in the, the status bar right now, so it has a list that's the battery thing, the clock, and the network status, which is airplane mode for us. And you can, you can interact in this field, you can type to select just like you would in a, an address book search field or something like that. And you can do that anywhere, in any app. And you can do it on the home screen as well. We can back out of these dialogues using the home button. There's also a special gesture in voiceover called the cancel gesture. And what it is, it's a, it's a two finger Z shaped swipe, Z for undo, which is pretty standard on computers. If you're not a sighted person and if you've been blind from birth and you don't know what shape the letter Z is, it's basically a back and forth squiggle on the screen. It's like the Mark of Zorro, as, as someone said. Of course, you won't know what the Mark of Zorro is if you've been playing from birth. You basically go from the left over to the right, and then down and left, and then over to the right again. So we can do that. Closing item chooser. And that's the global cancel gesture. Now, one of one thing I haven't shown you yet is is typing. Obviously, how do you how do you type? So let's maybe go into notes and we'll, we'll type something. Notes. Double tap to open. Notes. Note. Now Text on the iPhone, the editing. keyboard is an area down at the bottom of the screen, but roughly the bottom half of it with uh, the standard QWERTY arrangement usually, certainly is for me uh, with the British English system. We need a way to navigate around this keyboard and then enter text and Apple provides several different ways. Uh, one of them is actually handwriting where you can draw individual letters on the screen if you wish. That might take quite long. We're going to use the keyboard. And the model for this in voiceover is basically that you use one finger on the keyboard to find the letter you want, and then you can tap with another finger anywhere on the screen to enter that letter. So maybe if we wanted to type hello, I would first roll over the keyboard with my finger until I find an H. Capital T, capital G, capital H. There's an H. And I'm keeping my finger there and I'm going to type a tap somewhere else. Capital H. Now you heard that it increased the pitch of its voice there. It said firstly capital H when I'd selected it and then when I'd actually entered it it said capital H in a, a bit of a plummy silly English accent. The increase in pitch is to tell you that you have actually entered the letter. And by continuing to roll my finger to other letters I want and then tapping with another finger I can enter text. R -A -E. 
Now I made a typo there, so I'll use the, the backspace key, the delete key, just as you would. There we go. So I've typed hello there. That's one way to interact with the keyboard. You can also switch it to a mode whereby it acts like voiceover isn't on, so that you can just tap, single tap on the keys and it enters text. You can also do handwriting recognition, as I said before. Now, voiceover has got this, this extra feature called the rotor, and it's a way of choosing how certain interactions happen. When you're using the keyboard, it chooses, for example, the input method, whether you're using handwriting or such and such. And the rotor, if you imagine it, it's like a wheel that's got two sort of finger holes in it at the top and the bottom. And you put your fingers into the rotor and you twist them round like you're twisting a wheel. Handwriting, words. Handwriting, characters. Typing mode, edit. Typing mode. That's how the rotor works. Now, that's for the keyboard, but the rotor works in other places in the system as well. For example, if you're using Safari, the web browser on the iPhone, you can use the rotor to change what VoiceOver navigates between on web pages when you're swiping to the right and to the left. For example, you can have it jump between headings, which are H1 to H6 tags. You can have it jump between hyperlinks or just visited links. There's, there are loads of options, and you can use the rotor to basically choose which of those voiceover uses. Let's jump back out to the home screen. There are several other cool little features. Um, Double tap to open. Accessibility is provided by the system for all the standard controls, but developers obviously need to participate in that because say you've got an app who, that's got a tab bar along the bottom and instead of text labels, they're just icons, the developer obviously has to fill in a piece of information to tell VoiceOver what the icon actually means or corresponds to, and some developers don't do that. So what VoiceOver lets the visually impaired user do is actually add their own labels. If they've got a control that is not accessible, obviously they can ask a sighted friend what it is, and then they can relabel the element themselves. And we can even do that on the home screen. For example, say, one of these apps, um, there, there, there was a case for me actually when I was using the Twitter client Tweetbot where the English, the, the British English voiceover voice pronounced it Tweetbot instead of Tweetbot. So I relabeled it to have like Tweet space bot for the purposes of voiceover so that I, I wasn't irritated or amused whenever I you know, hovered over it. The way that you relabel things is you use a, a two finger double tap and hold. Say I wanted to relabel the Kindle app over here. Kindle. I'd select it. Double tap to open. Text alert. Text field is editing. And there Kindle. we go. I can Link relabel element. any element on the system, including in third party apps, just for voiceover. And whatever label I enter there, that's what voiceover will read instead of whatever it was reading before when I select that element. It's pretty cool. Cancel button. So let's cancel out of that. There's also this gesture called the magic tap, which is a two finger double tap. So you're going chuk chuk. And what that does, it basically tries to do the most common action for the app that you're in. If you're in the clock app uh, in the stopwatch uh, area of it, the stopwatch tab, you do the magic tap and it stops and starts the stopwatch. If you use it on the home screen, it uh, stops and starts your music. That sounds like Where I Go Again by White Snake, isn't it? Excellent song. The magic tap varies between apps, and again, it's up to developers to choose what it does. But the voiceover user is going to expect it to be a very commonly needed or useful utility function. Now, voiceover obviously. If you're severely visually impaired or completely blind, it's kind of silly to have this screen on all the time because it, it's a complete waste of battery power and you, you you just don't need it. What you need is a, you know your headphones or the, the speaker to listen to. So VoiceOver has a, a function called the screen curtain, which basically just switches the screen off, but without locking the device. Now that's a three finger a triple tap to do that. Screen cutting on. 
So that's it off. It looks like, to you and I, that sighted people, that looks like the iPhone's off, but it's actually still on. Unread. Kimball. OmniFocus. Twitter. Dark Sky. Settings. Notes. And you can still interact with it exactly as if the screen was on uh, in voiceover mode. It obviously saves a hell of a lot of battery power, some of which you, you do obviously need for voiceover because it's doing, you know, the voice synthesis all the time. This goes a long way towards uh, balancing the, the power requirements of voiceover. And it's obviously great for privacy as well. You can imagine if you've got some Bluetooth headphones or wired headphones in so that you can just be listening to voiceover whilst you use your device, no one can be looking over your shoulder because the screen's off. If you ever find your phone in this mode, remember it's a three finger triple tap, so three finger three tap to get back out of it. Screen cutting off. There we go. Now, in terms of activating voiceover, I showed you the triple press of home shortcut thing before, but you need to actually enable that yourself. You can enable that shortcut and indeed enable voiceover itself in the settings app. You go into settings, you go into the general category, and then you go into the accessibility subcategory, and that's where you can switch it on. If you are setting up a new iPhone, you'll get the choice to turn on voiceover during the setup process. Someone's asking me to wave my Apple Watch at you. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Apple Watch has voiceover as well. It works just like you'd expect. You can also set Apple Watch to accept a triple tap of the digital crown to switch on voiceover. And then it works just like I, like I showed you by you swipe to the next thing, you swipe to the previous thing. Uh, you can use two fingers to shut it up, single finger to select, double tap to activate. It works exactly the same. And that's true for your iPad as well. So yeah, that's, that's in essence how people who can't see the device use a, you know, a, a touchscreen gadget like an iPhone. What a person would do who can't Sweet see, heart. they would take this out of their pocket and you can obviously feel that the front is either that side or that side. You can actually feel that that's the glass, but if you couldn't, what people do with visual impairment is they look for the home button. And by look for, I mean, of course, use touch along the edges. It's not there. There it is. And then you know that this is the front and this is the bottom. And the home button should always be facing you and at the bottom. That's how we orient ourselves when we can't actually see. And then we can switch it on. 1622. This is the lock screen. Tuesday the 5th of May. Unlock. Button. The slide to unlock thing is treated as a button for voiceover purposes. So again, just like before, we just double tap anywhere at all to activate that. Screen locked. Let's bring it the screen back button. on. Unlock. Button. Unlock. And there we go. If Counter. there was a passcode set, brain. we could of course type in the passcode. It works exactly the same as a typing keyboard that I showed you a little while ago. Touch ID still works if you set up Touch ID, which you absolutely should. Uh, and that's the basics of it. If you get an alert, falls down onto the screen, voiceover tells you you've just got an alert and it jumps the focus up there. You can disable that if you wish. You can customize the voice, the pitch, the speaking rate, and all manner of other things. But that's essentially how it goes. It's pretty cool when you think about something that's a touchscreen device that has absolutely no tactile feedback at all within the screen at the moment. And Messages. yet you can use it Phone. even when you Mail. can't see. Double tap to open. That is voiceover. If you want Alert. to ask me some questions or whatever on Twitter, off. I'd love to hear those and I'll do my best to answer them, perhaps in a future scope or just, you know, via Twitter. I've sent a letter to my local Apple store. A letter, an email, <laughs> of course. I haven't physically written a letter asking if I can come in and give a, a sort of voiceover class to people who want to find out more about this, particularly, uh, you know, blind or visually impaired people in the local community. And I'm hoping that that will go ahead. Uh, assuming that it does, I'll be making my course materials available online so that if you know a bit about voiceover and you're comfortable presenting, you can maybe do the same thing uh, at your own Apple store elsewhere in the world. It is incredibly important to show people what these devices are capable of. People with visual impairments are sort of excluded from society in many ways. And these gadgets, um, particularly the Apple devices with their wonderful accessibility support, they're tools of 
participation and independence. They really do transform people's lives. It's fantastic that Apple have gone to such trouble to provide a first rate screen reader experience and there are plenty of other accessibility technologies in there as well. There's Zoom for people just with poor eyesight. There's a uh, braille uh, keyboard pairing. Uh, you can get Bluetooth uh, braille keyboards. It works like that. Um, there's something called switch control for people who have motor impairments and perhaps have to interact with different kinds of devices like a single clicker or a blow tube if they don't have control of their arms. And iOS and macOS 10 support all of these things out of the box without any additional uh, cost. It really is incredible. If you're a developer, finally, please have a little look at the UI Accessibility API uh, on the Mac and on iOS. You can make your app accessible to voiceover with a tiny, tiny amount of work, most of which you can just literally do in Xcode in the UI without having to write any additional code. It, uh, usually it'll take you a tiny little amount of time and it makes such a massive, massive difference for people who don't see the same way as you and I. I'm going to sign off there and go and get that cup of coffee I meant to get about half an hour ago. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is really, really important stuff. Uh, it's been lovely to speak to you and I'll see you on Twitter. Bye bye.